Hello Internet. 2017 was a year that most of us would probably like to pretend didn't exist. If 2016 was like falling off a cliff, 2017 was a boulder rolling down that cliff and then crushing our lifeless corpse just to rub it in. But in many ways it was a transitional year where we looked back at some of these things we realized weren't quite right and maybe even just started to work on them for the future, which is something that I did with my life. And now, as we all look forward to the year before us, with hopes in our hearts that perhaps this will finally be the happy year that we've been reaching for, let us first take one last glance back into the abyss to remind us of the hole that we've climbed out of in the form of all of my worst moments. These were the top Dan memes of 2017. After a string of great tweets that truly expressed how I was feeling at the start of the year, people seemed concerned that I was already being a bit too self-deprecating and cynical. So I decided to show some support in the easiest form that humans understand, a chain letter meme. And thus, Wholesome Howl was born. And what can I say, this beacon of hope made of Comic Sans and a blanket seemed to be what the world needed as people retweeted it, recreated it, it literally inspired art. Now, the joke was that I am not a very wholesome person, but a lot of people really took this like I had suddenly decided to completely change overnight and would now only be a symbol for positivity and optimism. And thus the theme for the year had emerged, getting people's hopes up and then slowly crushing them with disappointment. This wasn't then helped where on Phil's channel we produced the incredibly important content, Dan and Phil pastel edits in real life, where I dropped all of my black, obscure, underrated clothing and Phil dropped all of his plaid shirts in lieu of some pastel style. People couldn't fucking even look at that shit. Look how soft and pure we look. It just makes you smell sherbet looking at it. Then we put on these anime wigs that made it pretty creepy, but God, it was like a flowery hug to get you through the winter and people loved it. They drew it, painted it, Babadook to, oh yeah, the Babadook was briefly a meme, wasn't it? And again, could this be a new start for Dan? Did he finally realize that on the inside he isn't a black hole, but is actually a small, soft, cuddly? No, it was just a silly video. But big, honest, personal moment now. This was the year where I finally embraced my natural curly hair. Now, before you scoff at the triviality of such a statement, let me tell you, I have been straightening my hair every day since I was 14 and it took so much time and it never looked good and whenever I got wet I looked like a poodle and apart from a couple accidental haircuts and some flattering photos I never looked like whatever cool person I was trying to imitate but now finally thanks to fashion trends and a few iconic people I finally felt comfortable enough to just be myself and everyone was very supportive and liked the look, apart from a couple of those people that still identify as emo in 2017. Satan help their souls. So come on, Dan. Are you softening up a little bit? No, if I'm being honest, it's just that now I can have a shower and go straight outside. It's literally laziness. Now, my accidental commitment to wholesomeness in 2017 meant there was a lot of faith in the things that I said, which is apparent should probably never be a thing after in a live show one evening, I said this. I've had a challenging week. Oh, this last 10 days. It's kind of funny. Remind me to tell you about this week in about five months, okay? Somebody make a note in five months, say, well, hey, what about that week in March? Now, there was a reason why I didn't feel ready to talk about it then, but I knew I would later in the year, so I said, hey, just remind me to tell you guys. I didn't mean every single fucking day. There's this thing where giving the internet a mystery will just fuel wild speculation. What happened that week in March? Did Dan secretly get a dog? Did Dan secretly get married? Did Dan secretly have a secret? People went insane and they wouldn't let it go. It was the hottest conspiracy since whatever video some other YouTuber made about Dan and Phil that week. There were digital riots happening in my comments. People wanted, nay, they demanded and felt entitled to the truth. Let me get back to you on that in another two months. Bet you'd like to know what it was, huh? 
Well, no, I'll tell you later in the video. Yeah, that's right. You better learn some patience too, biatch. <laughs> then along came April, which as anyone who reads YouTube comments will know means the return of Dan and Phil Crafts. Yep, the third year running of our April Fool series where we pretend to have set up a crafts channel in a surreal hell dimension. Now, good things come in threes. It's a nice number, and if you do any more than that, despite everything else you could be doing in your whole life, people start to go, <laughs> you've obviously run out of ideas. <laughs> also, I don't think the universe or our souls could handle more of those videos. So we thought, let's go out with a bang. We will make one more Downfall Crafts video, and it will be weirder and funnier and creepier than ever before. So we decided to make a Potato Prince tutorial that ended with a satanic ritual and me murdering Phil like a found footage horror movie. <laughs> Honestly, I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's arguably the best content I created last year, but for a few people, did it go a bit too far? Perhaps. Did various Christian parents ban their teenagers from using social media after watching it? Probably. Will the disturbing art it inspired on Tumblr make the FBI open a case file on us? Undoubtedly, but it was a good end to the series. <sighs> of course, that didn't stop you lot from taking a random quote from the video. Be soft and neat. Soft and neat. And again, destroying YouTube by spamming it everywhere. I thought I told you little shits to stop doing that. There was a Reddit thread saying how Dan and Phil are two of the most annoying YouTubers because of the Dan and Phil craft spam. You think this is funny, do you? Like the anxiety and paranoia that I live with every waking moment of my existence contemplating my reputation as some kind of joke, huh? Well, yes, and I am in on it too, which is why we're all here. Let's continue. We did a show in Australia and went via Singapore where I took this inappropriate photo with a fountain of the city's mascot, the mermaid lion. And I mean, it was pretty obvious that there'd be some funny edits of this one like that, obviously, and the coloring very creative and that's very, very creative. <laughs> Jesus. And a few incredibly inappropriate ones that I could not show in a YouTube video. I'll just give you a second to imagine. Yes, they did that. Uh. Now, while I was in Australia, I apparently went through some rebellious experimental phase as I posted a photo with some ripped jeans that I bought with the caption, hashtag free the knee. Yeah, that's right. I'm cool. I'm edgy and alternative. I buy jeans that intentionally have rips in them. Got a problem, grandma? And let me tell you, this reaction, it was like I'd evolved from Dan to Dan Melian or Danny Saw. God, no, that sounds like some cringe MySpace nickname. Hashtag free the knee trended on Instagram that day and people seemed quite enthusiastic. And I know this is all a bit cringe, okay, but I genuinely have such low self-esteem that moments like this keep me going for at least a month. <laughs> yes, the Snapchat hot dog. And what is hiding? Of course. During this year, there were many things that were continuously on my mind, but one that reached crisis point and almost tipped me over the edge was a grammatical error. That's right. See, I talked about things that I did with Phil a lot because a lot of the things I did that year were with Phil. And when I did this, I happened to say, me and Phil did this, or me and Phil did that. Well, that's wrong, Dan. It's not me and Phil, it's Phil and I. Every goddamn time I'd say it, there would be a waterfall of, um, actually. And my annoyance at this was, Definitely a muse for the memes. Oh yeah, every hot meme of the moment had a me and Phil makeover until that is I said this in a live show. I'm gonna get me and Phil fucking tattooed on my forehead. You think I'm joking? And that just made it worse. Oh look, there I am with it literally on my head. <laughs> and after months of abuse, one time when I tweeted about how the Eurovision hosts last year totally copied mine and Phil's style with these glittery jackets and used Phil and I, thinking I was finally getting it right. Apparently, it was the one time when I was supposed to say me and Phil. I fucking quit. <laughs> but on this pile of things, contributing to my tentative teetering around the rim of neurosis last year, the one I was probably most desperate to address was how much I hated the apartment I was living in. No storage, traffic. Shut up. I got Phil videos. Drills. Listen to that! Tell me that's not drilling into your brain right now. It is. We had to go, and a few of you that probably noticed our 
physical twitching, sussed it out. But boy, when we left, it was emotional for everyone else. Seriously, people were mourning this apartment like it was someone that died. <laughs> it's the place Dan and Phil matured. Questionable. So many memories. Mostly sat in that sofa crease, crippling my spine. Our friends and family were like, oh no, won't you miss it? And yeah, we can understand why everyone would feel that way, but no, we wanted to get the heck out. And as many of you will have heard, moving house is supposedly one of the most stressful things in the entire universe, which was perfectly encapsulated in this candid photo of me taken by Phil. Wow. You can literally see the detachment and disassociation behind my glazed pupils. But hey, Dan holding an empty box, I smell an opportunity for another spicy edit meme. There was an entire Instagram account called What's in Dan's Box that filled it with all the freshest memes of the moment, including some good editing on that holy... Shit, that's disturbing. And as if moving house wasn't dramatic enough, the apocalypse was about to happen. Not the adpocalypse, although that was happening at the same time that was much less funny. Dan is not on fire, died. Yep, I decided to throw that brand and all the damn things it stood for into the fires of hell. People were understandably concerned that this might represent some scary change, like what if I changed, or my videos were different, or I stopped making videos altogether. No, it's just a bloody name. But when I made it clear why I thought Dan is Not On Fire was a bad name and that I wanted to move on from it, people really took it as an invitation to just beat that dead horse into a fine powder and snort it. And like a waking nightmare that would just reemerge when I least expected it, people wouldn't let me move on. Strangers conventions, even my own family. But with my new, ironic but less cringeworthy branding, an opportunity was spotted for another spicy edit meme, yeah boy! This coming from the account, shitty Dan edits, yes indeed, it is a dead meme. <laughs> okay, I was asking for that one. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Oh, really? Uh, of course. Now in this clearly very turbulent year, anything familiar was greatly appreciated and what is more reliable than Dan and Phil doing a themed baking video and totally cocking the whole thing up. Yep, for some bloody reason we thought it would be a great idea to do a whole video on our pastel personas and attempt meringues which are generally considered quite an advanced bake. And our final product... Ooh. Yeah, I, I feel like you really should have intervened with this thing yeah, with the bunny ears. Yeah, I know. That, that kind of was a disaster. I don't think we wished that enough. Yeah, and people weren't shy letting us know how funny this flop was, but then one of you went and tweeted a picture of our product to Gordon Ramsay. Now, I'm a big fan of his TV shows, and if you don't know, he does this funny thing where he sasses people's terrible cooking on Twitter. He only bloody retweeted the picture to his millions of followers and said they literally looked like shit. Oh yeah, that was funny to everyone, and I mean everyone. This celebrity roast moment was in the actual fucking news for fuck's sake. Fuckity, fucking, That was just for Gordon. I hope he's proud. Honestly though, this was incredible. I feel blessed that this happened and I will mount that tweet on canvas above my kitchen one day. Uh. On a more sincere note, one of the things I really wanted to do in 2017 was use my platform for good. And more than just participating in charity fundraisers, I wanted to use my own voice to talk about things that I was passionate about. And one of those, believe it or not, is politics and pizza apparently. And much like a pizza made out of acid and molten rock, it was a spicy year for politics in the United Kingdom. Woo! A surprise election. Oh, it was like a surprise party thrown by somebody that nobody likes that they almost forget to turn up to and everybody judges you just for being a part of it, even though you had to. Now, without wanting to get too partisan, as if more than 10 people subscribed to this channel don't have the same opinions as me, I thought it would be a good idea to get young people involved in democracy and vote for the first time if they haven't already. As if big decisions are being made about the future, it only makes sense that young people have a say in what this world is. And one way I did this was by posting 
taking this photo in front of a voting booth. I don't know how that helps either. Okay, look, I tried, but this image, it was like a meme miracle. It had all the right ingredients, the slav squat, prayer hands, ripped jeans, and whiteboard that would be very easy to change the text on. That's right, kids, it's another spicy edit me. That was almost a dab, I'm sorry. <laughs> Perfect as a reaction image, a sassy response, or just to express your inner turmoil clearly. <laughs> it was a weird week though, as my sincere message of support on Twitter got retweeted by none other than Edward Snowden. Yep, that's right, actual Edward Snowden retweeted me. So yeah, thanks for that, Ed buddy, you meme-loving fuck. If I wasn't on a list before, I definitely am now. <laughs> Good thing I don't have kinks or weird secrets on a computer somewhere or anything. What is he doing? Dan, why are you holding your laptop and a pizza cutter above a bucket of water? No, 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 don't film this! They can see! They can hear! This night only got rounded out by the UK's answer to Bernie, except with more aubergines and incredibly catchy chants. <laughs> Jez himself sliding into my DMs. Yep, that's right. Or more likely just someone in his staff saying thanks for tweeting about young people. But hey, this mysterious censored message, what could that say? I smell. I can't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> yep, classic. Crack open a cold one with the boys. Probably would, to be honest. But you in London won't let that one go, will ya? The oh, God, not even responding to that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's safe to say after this dramatic chapter of the year, I decided I'd lay low and not stress people out too much. So I thought I'd go to Florida, attend a YouTube convention, absorb some vitamin D, but as many of you know, I applied for the wrong visa and got kicked out of the country, so I had to take a day trip to the Bahamas to get let back in. In this insane situation, I saw an opportunity to have a bit of fun, so while I was at the airport in the Bahamas for about an hour, I geotagged a tweet showing that I was on an island in the middle of the Caribbean. But how when all of my YouTube friends were at Harry Potter World at Universal Studios? There was an international manhunt for me. How could I be in the Bahamas? Why? With who? Did I fake it all? But no, because I seem to have passport stamps, but how could that be possible in case I'm some international spy with multiple fake identities and fraudulent papers? <laughs> Maybe it was a bit mean, but frankly, I felt like you all deserved it. And hey, it may have been one of the most stressful experiences of my entire life, but at least I got a good video out of it. And shout out to Dan and Phil for the next time they travelled, where we actually missed our flight to VidCon because I lost my passport and Phil read the time wrong and it was the Queen's birthday so all the roads in London were closed and we had to stay at the airport overnight and get on a flight at 5am and then made it to the convention 20 minutes before we had to walk on stage and perform in front of thousands of people. Let's, say, let's just want... say what happened. Okay, um... We, we missed our flight. flight! Yeah, that... Yep. It is a miracle that we're even <laughs> stood here right now and we have had the worst two days of our entire life yes. literally just now. GG lads. I bet you're thinking, Dan, after all that travel trauma, what you need is a holiday. <laughs> No, but seriously, at this point in the year, I actually did go on a holiday and Phil, like the creepy little weasel he is, posted another candid creep shot of me where I had fallen asleep in a pool inflatable. <laughs> wow, look at me, like a desaturated soulless corpse on top of the brightest freaking object in the universe. It couldn't be less me. I had to post it. <laughs> and wow, the edits with this one. People were turning it into angsty band album covers, of course substituting them for actual donuts, and of course some creepy sh- that's too good. That is also the closest I will probably ever come to posting a cute holiday photo, so don't judge me, okay? Just let me have it. <laughs> and now we get to the big one. The big black D in the room. Yikes, that doesn't sound good, which is inappropriate considering we're talking about Depression! One of the things I decided at the start of 2017 is it would be the year where I'd finally open up about my mental health experiences. And after months of going back and forth internally, thinking about it and then planning and writing it for World Mental Health Day on October 10th, I posted Daniel and depression. And I was honestly terrified to upload this because of what the reaction might be. We all know the internet and how many idiots and trolls there are, right? But I was so surprised by the positive reaction from 
everybody. The YouTube community, my fellow creators, friends and family in real life, press on social media and even a few traditional ones. I became an ambassador for a charity called Young Minds which raises awareness for mental health issues affecting our generation and it was just amazing to see comments saying things like, I relate to your story and I didn't know what was wrong with me before, or this inspired me to finally pick myself up. And honestly, more than any of the things that I've done in the recent years of my career or life in general, this is what I feel the most proud of. And like I said in the video, because I'm an edgelord, I love an inappropriate joke about depression that makes me feel happy and less defined by this thing, which was kicked off by our good friend Tom Scar, who in a video with Phil and Hazel, where we played our board game Truth Bombs, said this. If Dan could be a god, he would be the god of serotonin deficiency. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which means he would get no sunlight. Hard. No, no, Phil, Phil, that's, that's vitamin today, D. Ser Tom. Serotonin is the hormone that makes you happy. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna have to guess that Tom wrote that one. That's correct. Is that the case? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> well, Depression well, well, well. memes. Oh, gotta love that guy. And this, of course, opened the floodgates to all kinds of. See, I like this. Okay, it's not trivializing the issue or hurting anyone's feelings. It's just funny to put something so serious in such inappropriate situations. And wow, that is a good surreal meme. That's like a fine wine. I'm just gonna appreciate that for a minute. And it would seem my laptop playing a YouTube video of a fireplace has decided to die at this exact point. Wow, and geez, those are some greasy fingerprints. Oh yeah, and that week in March, you remember that thing from earlier in the video? Turns out I wanted to talk about a week where I ran out of antidepressants and had some crazy withdrawal symptoms where I was just shaking and puking every day and couldn't tell what was real. Yeah. I just wanted to talk about medication. Bet you feel bad now, huh? Yeah, see, this is what happens when you can't just be patient and instead you just speculate and build something up in your head to some fantastical story and then it just flattens you. Like my mood when I was on those drugs. I think we all learned something from that. <laughs> so in a year where I embraced my curly hair, moved house, rebranded myself and opened up about mental health, surely I was done now. There were no more bombs to drop, apart from truth bombs, fuck the party board game that lets you know what people really think of you, available online and in stores now. But no, Dan and Phil are going on a 2018 world tour with a brand new stage show called Interactive Introverts? Ah! Yeah, that was a surprise for a lot of people. Along with some excellent graphic design, we explained that we wanted to perform a show for people in the places that watch our videos that we'd never been to before, like Manila in the Philippines, or Mexico, or Brazil, and if we're doing that, we might as well go to places like the UK, where we haven't been for two years, and perform a brand new Dan and Phil comedy stage show that would blow people's minds and be the best day of their freaking lives. Um, the thing is though, you can't exactly produce a trailer for a show that hasn't started touring yet, so what exactly Phil and I would do- Ooh, Phil and I- <laughs> Speculating as to what we would do on stage was a fun game, as you can see from these. And people really wanted the ticket- oh god, that- <laughs> Inactive ingredient- why is that so funny? For real, if you want to come see me and Phil in real life before one of us dies or we get hit by a meteor, then you can find out where we're going on tour, when, and how to get tickets to come see us at danandphiltour.com. And I genuinely look forward to making you laugh in real life. I also shared this outtake photo from the shoot where somehow my neck and chin became perfectly rectangular. How does that happen? But that's not all, as there is an even worse photo that no one has seen. And I warn you, once you've looked at this, you may never be able to look at me the same. What? happened here? Take a moment to contemplate this. Why is there so much skin? Where does my face end and my neck begin? What space-time anomaly made this horrific thing happen? I am sorry that I showed you that. Uh. Then as we headed towards the end of the year, surely there'd been enough excitement and now it was just time to make some videos and get ready for Christmas. Well, Phil disagreed. Now this may technically be a Phil meme, but I was there, okay, and my suffering was an all too real part of it. See, we decided last year to start live streaming gaming on our channel, Dan and Phil Games. Just think of that, Dan and Phil, live on camera, totally unedited in front of thousands of people doing emotionally stimulating things. 
what could go wrong. There we were, playing an innocent game you might remember from your childhood called Fireboy and Water Girl, where we control these two cute characters and have to jump through a maze and finish the level by exiting through their respective doors. Then this happened. Why can't I go in your door? Because of gender roles, uh, Phil. I could just go in my lady button. door and leave you behind on this adventure, but no. Lady door sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna Come say. Come in my like... lady door. Are there... <laughs> Are there any other characters? Did you think about that no. before you said it? Phil, no, what did you do? I so desperately didn't want this to be a thing. I just didn't want people to repeat it or reinforce it, but no, there were lady door memes out the wazoo. You can think of a meme? Oh, someone did a lady door version of it. Someone commented that we should call our 2018 world tour the lady door tour. Well, there we go. That's been ruined before it's even begun. Someone drew lady door meme Porn. Yeah, that's a first, even for me. What is happening with the world? I mean, it's actually a really impressive drawing, but still. Then for some reason, as the first video was so popular, we decided we'd play it again in another live stream, and Phil somehow made it even worse. There's gonna be no Lady Door from me today. The girl zone. Everybody in the goddamn chat is saying Lady Door. Phil is gonna... Enter my female exit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought I'd try and choose a different You were one. trying to euphemize it. And it didn't and work. And you said female exit. Jesus Christ. Okay, I take it back. Edit it out. We can never we edit it out. We can't edit it out. This is a live stream. <sighs> you can see the exact moment that I completely give up. So we didn't play it for a while, understandably, but during Gaming Mus, where we filmed a video every day of December leading up to Christmas Eve on Denifil Games, we thought we'd play it one last time. And like, kicking little baby Jesus, this happened. Open so. the queen cage. Okay, well it's obviously impossible for you to not make vagina references. Queen cage. Honestly, it's like this year we almost reached the end of the road and then suddenly there was a car pileup. And what is this video that literally everybody is telling me to watch? Lady Door official music video. Okay. I could just go in my lady door and leave Oh God. Oh no, what's this? Why does this feel like it's building up to something? No! Oh god! Why does it sound like there's gonna be a beat drop? Don't do this to me. <laughs> Why? Why? Why won't you just let this be? Oh, the fucking dumb! How did you even edit? I'm in physical pain. I f I have a tight chest from watching. The oh, oh god! Fuck no! Stop it! Stop it! You stop it! All of you stop it! Phil, stop it! I'm gonna fucking stop it. Okay, here we are. Moving on to the last one. Let's get this over with. Finally, like a metaphor for this whole godforsaken sun orbit, when I went home to visit my family for Christmas, me and my mother decided to make a vegan coconut praline and raspberry sponge cake. Neither of us had tried it before, so it looked a bit messy and we can't decorate at all, so we just threw some glitter on it, but we were proud of ourselves and it was delicious. Our whole family had one slice after Christmas dinner, then sat down to play some Mario Kart when we hear some mysterious noises coming from the kitchen. So we all walk in to find our family dog, Colin, who we've always thought of as the sweetest, most innocent, good boy that had done no wrong in his entire life, had climbed on a chair onto the kitchen table and eaten half of the entire cake. Or should I just say the top half with the praline, because when he got down to the raspberry layer, suddenly he wasn't there for it anymore. And we were screaming. We spent hours making this thing. It was delicious and we all only had one slice and then it was covered in dog fur. And the dog just ran into the other room to hide under my granddad's legs in shame with cream all over his snout. I had to share this tragedy with the internet who enjoyed it so much that Twitter made it a moment which meant that everyone on earth with the Twitter app saw it and let's just say they had two things to say. One, who the 
hell names a dog Colin? <laughs> and okay, right, I see what people are saying. It sounds very fun, but look, we adopted him a few years ago and he already answered to the name Colin. So yes, we thought it was weird at first, but actually I grew to love the name Colin and would consider giving hilariously normal names to my future pets. I find it very endearing. Two, that the cake looked so terrible that the dog did us a favor by eating it. Oh, there were some savage roasts, my God. And you know, to be honest, they were true. You've seen the meringues. I am not a baker, okay? Could anything sum up 2017 more than something you worked incredibly hard on and were excited about, turning out to be terrible, getting destroyed in front of you, then being publicly shamed for it. Some honorable mentions throughout the year go to how loud I scream in gaming videos, people begging me to change my icon for months, so I changed it to this, which nobody asked for, but was quite memeable. Me being a rat, a painting of me, inappropriately in the background of 13 Reasons Why, still being in teen magazines, despite what I said in the last video, me falling off my chair again, playing a horror game. Oh God, if I have to- Oh no! <laughs> He's almost off the chair. No! No, it's been so long! <laughs> For fuck's sake, I right. thought I'd make one fucking year without falling off a fucking chair. And various versions of your favourite 2017 memes, like that one, what in Tarnation, that's pretty good, oh, fidget spinners were a thing, oh, elf on a shelf, it's howl on a towel, lots of ones about me uploading regularly, the monkey haircut, and yes, that, that roll deep one was big. And lastly, this combination of the movie It and the internet is here that ruined the legacy of Tatanov forever. <laughs> The internet is here. The internet is great. When you've got lots of followers who... I said earlier good things come in threes and I believe that terrible things can too. So this may be the last memes of the year video that I make unless there's actual riots and I fear for my physical safety. So I hope you've enjoyed the ride that was my last year in memes. On one hand, it went so quickly, and other than a few big things like the mental health stuff and moving and the new tour, it's hard to think of everything that happened, but God, when you're reflecting it like this, there's uh, too much happened. I didn't become the pastel-wearing, sugary, sweet, always positive version of Dan that some people who like boys with brown hair but aren't really here for my jokes or pesky personality would have me be, but unfortunately, that's just not who I am or will ever be. But I feel like I did still grow as a person, try new things, and most importantly, somehow survived another year. So don't worry, just because we all hope the world will take a positive turn, doesn't mean I will, because I'll always be that depressing, self-deprecating, distressed dude named Dan expressing myself on the internet. And I appreciate you watching. Goodbye. What? No, no, no! Set me free! I'm out. You know what all these things do. See you some other time.